Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to the New Brick Workshop. Now this is my track saw cutting station. I've moved it into the centre of the workshop because I use it more than perhaps any other surface for cutting and so on. I created the top with the path guide system, of course, from Axminster to Tools and Machinery, but it's sitting on a pair of trestles. And if I just lift this up and move it back a shade, you can see that a little more clearly. You can see two trestles and I've got some cross members that go across and these are on a little frame so they're fairly rigid. But with my new style workshop where I've moved almost everything into this one part, I need to use up all the available space and there is a huge amount of wasted space under here. And this is my mobile wood cart and the cart consists of the following elements. At the very bottom I've got four casters. Uh, they've got little brakes on them but since I've built it I don't know that I need to use them very often. Then I've got two shelves, this one and this one, and these have got a clear run through for longer pieces of wood which are at least half the length of the cart. And I say that because I've got vertical pieces here and below uh, which are at the halfway point so that no wood will fall out provided it is at least half the length of the cart. And then at the top I've got a little shelf area where I can put all the little pieces of wood that I just cannot bear to throw away. And I've got lots of these and so that is almost completely full already. And I'm going to show you in this video how I went about making this, but there are no plans available. My idea is that I show you it and you then use your initiative to build whatever it is that suits the space that you have. Now when it comes to gluing this up, you've got to be quite careful. The reason is we've got these pieces that need to go in like this and we've got uh, these pieces that come in from the side. So these rails and these styles uh, need to be glued together in a particular order. And the only way that it will work properly is to do the middle gluing here first and then bring uh, the styles in from uh, the side. So I'm going to turn those up so I can put glue in. I'm going to put glue in these middle ones, glue in there, glue in there and so on. I'll just give this a little bit of encouragement. One doesn't really need to leave the clamp on for more than a, a minute or two, to be honest. Right, well, I've put the bits and pieces. I've got that sort of organized more or less right. Right, I'm getting there slowly but surely. Now, it's one thing to remember with dominoes, you always have a little bit of wiggle room. So you saw me put the clamp on there, it's because this wasn't quite coming together where it should. But I'm happy with that now. And I'll just check this for square. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oops. Absolutely. Absolutely dead on. I don't believe that. That's all right. This is very slightly out there. I can see it's very slightly out, but it's, it's not a functional piece. These are the joints that matter. So I'm pleased with that. Now, as I said at the beginning, I'm not issuing plans for this because this is a challenge for you. This is a chance for you to do your own design, your own plan and uh, go through the process. It's really worth doing. Now, there is one little poo trap I'll point out. This is the bottom of one side of the frame and at the very bottom and in the middle, I'm going to have some stock which is a little bit wider than the thickness of the material that I'm going to use for the base of the shelf here, there and there. Now I want this plywood to be flush with the bottom of this long 
rail here. But I want it to be flush at the top with this rail that goes across the ends. Therefore, it means because this is more than the thickness of the plywood, this has to be put in so it's flush there. But this rail here has to be slightly under flush. So you've got to just work that bit out yourself depending on uh, your stock. In my case there's a difference there of 11 millimeters. That's because that's 29 millimeters and uh, my plywood is going to be 18. So I feel as though we're almost on the home straight now. So I'm going to get all these bits glued up. Now another poo trap which actually I made the mistake with but I didn't show it to you is these intermediate pieces here and it's all due to this little offset here. This piece is x uh, millimetres long, this is 11 millimetres shorter and the reason for that is that's 11 millimetres less there. So there we go. Now another thing I'll point out at this stage, which I don't think I've mentioned before, this stock is 15 millimetres in thickness, yet I'm using 6 millimetre dominoes. It really doesn't matter. As long as you're careful, the only risk is that when you're gluing, you can, and then pushing a domino in, you can get hydraulic pressure. And with thinner stock, it can split it. It's certainly the case even with the normal thickness stock. If you're using MDF, it splits like bilio, so you need to be very careful. In that case, just knock the dominoes in very gently and very slowly. You know, quite a few taps to get them in. And after you've done a few hundred of these, you'll find they're quite easy, really. Let's get a start. Once you get a start, it's actually relatively easy. Relatively easy. Not dead easy, but relatively easy. Right, I'm now going to move this down onto the floor so I can put some clamps on it and just see how it looks. There that is. So I'll put some on the side. I'll start in the middle here. I'll just get rid of a bit of excess glue. I'm not worried too much about the glue and the glue stains. The reason for that is quite simple. This is a tool. Remember that, it's a tool, not a work of art. I've actually got to check it for square in several places. This top lot there is absolutely square as can be. Uh, this is slightly out here. And what I can do is just Loosen that clamp. You've got a little bit of wiggle room with dominoes and I don't know if it's possible to see but just here it's just a little bit proud. This rail is just a little bit proud so I'm going to give it a little bash like that and that's that. That's now flush. Right, I'm happy with that, happy with that, happy with that, happy with that. Now just supposing the whole thing was out of square such that when I put my square in here, there's a gap here, but it's touching there. So there's a gap here, it's touching there. If you adjust the clamps so that now we want to close it up that way. Okay, so this end needs to go that way. So what you'd do is you'd loosen this clamp and you want to get that end to go that way. So what you're going to do Loosen this and offset this a little bit so that end is further that way and that stays where it is. Then when you clamp that like so, that slight angle there will draw that closed. And uh, it's a thing to practice. Once, once you get, get an eye for it, it's very easy. I'm just going back to the other end now. As I said, I'm not too worried about a bit of excess glue. Um, I'm more worried about just making sure it's all nice and square. Oh, spot on. Spot on again. Because that's a fairly wide piece of wood there, you're almost bound to get this to come up square. Almost bound to. I'm now going to put it up the right way. 
Right, I now need to check it square this way. It's, I was slightly suspicious about squareness here. So I've got a little block of wood which can go against the rail. And I'm just going to use that to check. And actually that is fine. So it may just be a s slight uh, deformity in the, this corner here. Um, it's nothing to worry about. Just check on this side. That's fine. And I'm happy about the others. Now I'm going to leave this to dry overnight. Now I'm not worried if it is a fraction out of square. The reason is that because of the nature of the, the, the construction, if when I put my uh, flooring pieces in, there's a piece at the bottom, middle shelf, and there's a piece here, the shelving pieces, um, they're going to be perfectly square. So they will help to true this back up just by moving it a fraction, if need be. So anyway, I'm happy with that. And you may have noticed in part of the reorganisation of the workshop, I've moved the track saw cutting station into the main body. The reason for that is very simple. I use it a huge amount of the time and it's much more convenient to be here. And also it lends itself to the new layout that I've got in mind. Anyway, I'm just cutting up the plywood for the uh, basis of the various uh, shelves in that uh, unit. Um, I've measured across here, I've allowed for my kerf line. I've got this up against some of the uh, uh, path pups at the end there, those little small dogs. I've got the tall path dogs here and I'm going to do my cut. And there that is, I've got one good side at the top there, two sides here. I've now got to just cut it to length this way and I'm done. Now I've marked this for length to the exact length to a pencil line there and I'm going to cut this in the usual way because the piece that I want is on that side of the rail. That's it, that's my pencil line in the right place. This is definitely against those dogs. So that's my first piece, cut to size. Incidentally, this track saw cutting station, as per the plans that I've given away, uh, make it quite easy to cut something which is uh, 930 millimeters uh, this way. I'm just marking up now for the little cutouts which allow the plywood to go past the, the styles legs, whatever you like to call them, and I'll cut these out by hand using my Japanese pull saw. Now in order to get this intermediate shelf in place, I've put some clamps flush with the underside here. This is upside down. Uh, flush with the, uh, what is the, actually the top of this rail, it's underneath at the moment. And uh, I've done that on all four of the legs. And that means that this then should sit just about the right place. That's it. Now because I cut this piece of plywood on the track saw cutting station, it's pretty near perfectly square and I knew that my frame was pretty well square. So this has gone in quite nicely. Uh, now, in order to keep this in place, I'm gonna put screws in from the outside. I'll put uh, three along there and three along there and all round. So that's 12 screws all together. And that hold that sheet in. I'm not gluing it in because maybe one day I'll take this apart, reuse the plywood, maybe reuse some of the frame, who knows? And I've just put these two clamps here so that that's keeping that piece in place. It means I can take these off and I'm going to turn it over in order to do the screws. I can now make a little adjustment here. And I'll do the screws that come in from these sides all at once, so when I've got all three of the shelving pieces in.
And I'm now gonna just turn it upside down because it's now time to do the casters. Now, you may have noticed I've got a little bit of a recess here that's deliberate. I wanted to have a little bit of thicker material where the casters go. So I can plant a little piece on here, at each corner, and uh, the ca casters then have got this extra 11 millimeters plus the 18 millimeters of the ply. Now I've got the unit the correct way up and the casters are gonna go underneath here. And in order for uh, this uh, to be fixed, I'm gonna use a bolt like so. But I need to spread the load where the bolt goes through. So I'm gonna put a 30 millimeter diameter washer on this side and then the caster will come up from underneath and be screwed on with a nice hefty lock nut. But I need to spread this load with a washer. So therefore I'm going to rebate this the whole depth of the head of the bolt and the washer, which is eight millimeters. And I made a little hole all the way through from the other side, and that's where I'm gonna drill now. And in order to judge my eight millimeters, I've got a little piece of wood I can put down into the hole. I've marked eight millimeters on it. And the advantage of that little pilot hole I did, which is one and a half millimeters in diameter, is that the end of this forcing a bit now fits nicely into it. Not enough yet, so that's perfect. And I'll now do the other three. Right, well I've cut my bolts to length. I've got all the bits and pieces, so I can now start assembling. So the bolt washer goes in from this side and that's nicely flush. And on the other side, I'm gonna put the caster, a washer, and then the lock nut. That's set nice and tight. Perfect, I've just got three more to do. And there it is, I've got all four casters on. And the idea is that scraps of wood uh, that are shorter than that go in the top here. And I've got all sorts of little nice bits I keep. Pieces which are that length or up to this length uh, go in the two shells below. And that's that complete now. I can now tuck this back underneath the track saw cutting station. It's out of the way, yet it gives me a huge amount of extra storage. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.